welcome to GTV. Today I would like to demonstrate how to do a basic startup and operation of Eaton Color Hammers SVX 9000 series AC drive. After verifying that the wiring is correct for the basic application settings, I can apply power to the drive. The control panel has LED indicators to show if the drive is in local or remote operation as well as a fault light for when there is a conflicting parameter or critical error. Once a fault is cleared, I can use the reset button here to clear the fault before continuing operation. The LCD display will show the status of the motor with direction of rotation, status of motor such as run or stop, and any alarms or faults. It will also indicate the source of control. In this case, the keypad is in local operation and the LCD displays keypad to show that this is the method of control that is currently selected. To access the parameter menu, I can use the right or left arrows. From the first screen, all I will have to do is push left once. The display will give me directions on how to access the programming mode. I will push the enter key to access the parameters. The basic setup has parameters labeled from M1 to M8. The parameter group can be found in the upper left corner. M1 is for parameter settings. To alter anything from the P1 to P12 settings, which includes my motor data, I will push the right arrow. If no buttons are pushed after a degree of time, the drive will go back to the output mode. In the basic parameter set, I will keep most of the data at its default, but will change the data according to my motor's nameplate. To scroll through parameters within these settings, I will use the up and down arrows. P1 and P2 is the minimum and maximum frequency which I will keep at the default. Next are P3 and P4 for my acceleration and deceleration speed. Currently, this is set to 3 seconds, which is the default. I will pass this setting and go to P5 to set the current limit. I will set this to a number for either a constant torque or variable torque load. For variable torque, I can set it to 110% of my full load amps, and for constant torque, I can set it to 150% of my FLA. For demonstration purposes, I will push the right arrow and change this value to 7.6, and then press enter to save. I will scroll up to P6 for the nominal voltage of the motor. This can be found on the nameplate of the motor, and I will change this to 480, and then press enter again to save. P7 is the nominal frequency, which is also on my motor's nameplate. I will keep this value at 60 Hz according to the nameplate. The next value is my nominal speed listed in RPM. The nameplate states 1760 RPM. I can adjust this the same way by pushing the right key and then using the arrow keys to adjust the setting to 1760 and press enter to save. Next is my nominal current as listed on the nameplate. This should be listed in amps. I will set the current to 5.4 amps. The next two parameters is a preset speed that I will not change, and the final parameter in this setting is the input phase supervision. This will give directions to the motor in case there is a loss of phase. I will keep this at no action, but I can choose to fault or coast to fault if needed. To go back to the programming menu, I will push the left key. If I go up, I will have the option to change the keypad control. Since most of these settings can be changed in the operation mode, I will continue to scroll up. I can see that M3 next, which shows active faults, M4 can show a history of faults, and then M5 is the system menu. Although I won't make any changes to these settings, I will push the right arrow at the system menu to see the current settings. Here I can set the system settings such as language, application, copy parameters, parameter comparison, security such as passwords and parameter locks, keypad settings, hardware settings, and system information. Making any changes to these settings require advanced knowledge of the drive and should not be handled without the use of a manual and qualified help. I will push left again to the programming menu and scroll up to M6 for expander boards. 
This is where I can see what expander boards are connected to the control board and allow me to access the parameters associated with these boards. For the basic demonstration, I will continue to scroll up to M7 for the monitoring menu. This menu allows me to see the parameter values during operation, including some that are not given in the operation mode. The final setting is M8, which allows me to go back to the operation mode. I will push enter here. Now that my data is complete, I will push the up arrow to change the frequency reference and then the start key. The motor will ramp up to the desired speed. Using the up and down arrows allows me to change the speed and the right arrows allow me to check the status of the operation. I can then push stop to stop the motor. Eaton Cutler Hammer SVX 9000 series AC drive along with thousands of other products and services are available at galco.com. Also, don't forget to sign up for our newsletter found on the link below.